Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, this is actually like part six of the build of this Airfix 172nd scale Hawk Hurricane Mark 1. Um, but it's actually not part six, it's actually uh, a complete separate video all about outdoor paints. So um, James Skiffins over at uh, Sprewbox got in touch with me and said if I send you some samples of outdoor paints, will you build a little model and test them out for me? So I said yes. So what I've done, I have made a video series which I don't think you'll have seen yet and it's basically five parts up to now and we've built this, this little 172nd scale hurricane and we haven't built it as per, you know, like a starter set using the glue and the paints and everything. What we've done, we've built it properly, dealing with seams, scribing the, the lines that we've lost, making sure everything fits nicely and we've painted up the interior. It's all lovely and all come together nicely. So I'm um, very, very happy with how it's come out as well. A couple of little greeblies on the kit, but, you know, for what it is, it's uh, it's great. So, basically, what we've got to do now is paint it. And I'm going to do this scheme here. I purposely wanted to do this because I wanted to test the black and the white from the outdoor paints. So it's going to be this scheme here. So we've got the white and the black undersides. Um, and then we've got the camouflage with the, uh, the, dark, the dark green and the dark earth on the top. So I've received my samples. These are not the bottles. If you buy um, Outlaw paints, they will not come in a bottle this sort of size. They're very similar to these. These are the SMS paints, which I bought one of these to test and I'm not over the moon with it actually, to be honest. I haven't tried it yet, but um, I'm just looking at the way it settles in the bottle and it's, it does settle very, very fast. Um, so what we've got here is basically, these are the Outlaw paints. These are just a couple of little couple of millimeters that James has sent as a sample so I've got a black primer here to try and I must be honest I have tried this and I love it um, as you know this stuff here this Mr. Surfacer is my go-to black primer and this often runs out it becomes rarer than hen's teeth so then I kind of move on to this one which is the MRP fine surface primer which is absolutely wonderful it gives a really nice finish but it's very very thin you use a lot of paint and it absolutely stinks. So there we go. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind. Um, I said to James, we need an alternative. So this stuff, I think, is going to be a lot of people's favourite over the other two. Um, I don't know if it, will, if it will stand in front of uh, MRP for me, but we shall see. Uh, if anything, it's a little thick uh, to spray. Um, and I would like to thin it a bit, but I'm not really sure what you can thin it with. I have spoken to somebody who shall remain nameless, and they said they tried to thin this with levelling thinners, and it didn't like it. So I'll have to do some tests. So here we've got the RAF cockpit green, which we've already used, and we'll be using on the canopy, because we've, we've got the canopy mast, and we're going to spray the green so that from inside it's green. We've got the RAF black in this nice broken bottle, um, so that's going to be part of the underside painting. We have the white, obviously, which is going to be for the underside. Um, we've got the yellow, which will be for the propeller tips. I'm getting no, it's not. I'm not going to be using the yellow. I have already used the yellow on my Sea King build, and I found that um, there was a bit of an attack going on with the plastic. And then I realised it wasn't the paint; it was actually the plastic. Because um, I tried Mr. Surfacer and also LP paints, which are designed to go straight on plastic, and they had exactly the same effect. So that's in part 12 that you may have seen by now, I'm not sure. Um, or is it part 13? Part 13. Medium green. This is the wrong colour, really, for a camouflage green. It needs to be darkened up a bit. So I'm going to mix a little bit of black in it and just darken it up. Um, and then we've got the REF Dark Earth here. Now, one of the things I want to show you, which is absolutely awesome with this paint, Comparing it to the SMS, I mean, you can see just now I've already shaken this, but we can see down here, we've got all this pigment in the bottom, okay? And I can shake this to high heaven, and it's still all there. You can see all this yellow stuff at the bottom, and I'm shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking, and it's just not moving. I mean, it's going to go eventually, but honestly, it's just... Yes, I could put a ball in there and it make things a lot easier, but... That's one of the issues with the SMS paints, and other paints are the same as well. What I like with this stuff, I don't know how it's made, I don't know what it is, they call it an acrylic lacquer. Um, but if you look in there, you can see in there we have thinner. 
okay, and paint. You can see the white paint here and you can see the thinner floating right below. Watch this. One, two. And pretty much all of that white paint has gone off the bottom. Three, four. That's it. It's absolutely amazing how quick it shakes up. So that's a really good thing. I can show you again with this medium green. Now that one's been... Here we go. I can show you with this dark earth. Straight away, it's, it's, it's there. And the yellow. The RAF cockpit green. You can see how quick that shakes up and the colour's all in there. So really, really chuffed. So, this model has had a light coat of um, Mr. Surfacer Primer. We've obviously got the sponge in the wheel wells, we've got masking tape on the landing lights, we've got sponge and masking tape in the radiator, we've got masking tape on the cowl, uh, ca uh, the um, canopy, and we've got masking tape on our landing lights. So we've got to now get on, I'm obviously going to do the white first, so this side is going to be white. I've marked here black so I get the right undercarriage door painted in white. Um, I was going to fill those sink marks, but to be quite honest, I can't be bothered now. Um, so we're not going to be using the black primer, but I'm going to go straight onto this with the white. Now I have cleaned my airbrush out thoroughly. I've got it set, I'm just going to check. Yeah, I've got it set on about 17, 18 PSI. I'm using an Iwata Revolution BR um, Japan JJ. This is my old one. This airbrush is roughly... It's got to be getting on for 13 years old now um, and it's still going strong. Uh, I actually bought a new one and I've had some issues with it and I couldn't understand whenever I pulled the, the nozzle completely back or the, the, the lever if you like it would kind of go instead of being like you would go here go and as you pulled it back it, and when I looked under a magnifying glass what I noticed was the actual needle the nozzle was off center here so i've done some jiggery pokery and tried to get it all square but it seems like there's an issue with the threads or something and it's pulling it over so um i've actually put the new parts from that airbrush all of them the needle the, the trigger the valve in here the mechanism the nozzle, everything, this is all that is left of the old airbrush, the two parts on the front, the body, and the handle it back here. So it's basically a new airbrush in an old body. A bit like if you gave me a new pair of legs, you know, an old man with new legs. <laughs> That's what I'd be. So um, anyway, let's get this white paint shaded up nicely. I'm sure that's all done now. And you can see it's very heavily pigmented because normally you would see through this bottle, but I can't see through it. It's, it's, it's very, very nice indeed. And it's basically designed to be used straight from the bottom. I'm going to move my model out of the way because these little sample pots have these horrible little plastic caps in them. And as you remove them, they tend to, they tend to give you a little squirt. I've got black on my fingers. That's actually black super glue when I've been working on something else. So here we go. You might feel as, as I pull this off, it might spit. In fact, I'm going to put a piece of towel over it because it does make a bit of a mess when it spits. You won't have this problem unless, of course, Outlaw use these in their full-size bottles, I'm not sure. But um, as you pull these out, they tend to spit. It was probably a temperature thing. It was probably um, because they seem a lot better now. When I did when I looked at them before, it was quite warm. So you must remember, don't put the cap on and shake the bottle because it goes everywhere. Because that is not a seal. That's your seal. So um, we're just going to pour this in the airbrush. Okay. Now, as I say, to me, I heard a lot of people say about Outlaw Paints, it was too thin. Um, and as I said, I was talking to somebody the other night, and in my opinion, if anything, it's slightly, just, I'd like to thin it a bit. But as I say, I don't know what to thin it with. Now, I'm going to put this lid back on here. 
but I'm not going to shake the bottle because, as I say, it doesn't have a seal. So what am I going to test it on? <clears throat> um, let me find something to test it on. Let's test it on the side of this cardboard stand here. As you can see, it sprays very, very nicely. So I'm just going to go straight to the model. And it is smelly, but I'm, I'm doing this little bit just on camera, and then I'm going to finish it off in the booth. So... As you can see, it goes down beautifully. It covers really, really well. And as I mentioned before, I had the problem with it attacking plastic. Um, hopefully I won't get that on this. This is a different plastic. The, the Airfix Sea King is a new plastic, new to Airfix, I think. It's made in India. It's to the same specification as the Airfix 124 Spitfire, but it's nothing like as nice to work with. Okay, so that's three very thin coats. And as you can see, that's covered on there beautifully. It's very difficult to show white. You'll, you'll see it better when I use the black. So I'm going to go in the booth now and get the rest of this sprayed and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts. Okay, and there we go, there's our white done. I've got a couple of bits of dust in it, which I'll just wipe away there. I'll go over that again and just touch that in. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, very, very nice. Covers very easily. As I say, could do a thin and back a bit. What I've done here is a little experiment. I've got some Mr. Cut Lovely Thinners in the last little drop that's left in the airbrush. And I've done a little test on my buster wing here and it sprays beautifully um, so I must get back in touch with the person I was speaking to and find out what they've done because it hasn't turned it lumpy the way he was describing it to me it's like when you try and use like Tamiya thinner to thin AK in the bottles you know it just turns it to like cottage cheese but it hasn't done that at all so uh, very strange I'm going to have to put another little drop in here and just to prove I'm not fibbing to you what I'm going to do is put a drop in here and I'm going to show you okay Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners all right Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners I know it's in a smaller bottle but I decant from the big bottles into the little bottles they're harder to knock over and I'm a clumsy oaf so okay so Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners couple of drops and then the paint just a couple of drops get the cover back on the thinners blow it back through get away from the model just blow it back through just to stir it a bit let's get rid of all this bloody thinners that I've just sprayed all over the bench I'm a clumsy, as I say I'm a clumsy oaf And I'm just going to test on here first. And as you can see, it's painting beautifully, no issues whatsoever. And I'm just going to go over this wing because I had some dust in there, and when I took the dust off, it left a dark patch behind. But as you can see, it's going down on here, no problem whatsoever. Now remember, guys. I haven't been paid to say this is good. I haven't been given <clears throat> a boatload of paint so that I say it's good. And even if I had been, if it wasn't good, I would tell you it isn't good. And I always like to correct myself if I'm in error. Like I said earlier, somebody told me they tried this and it made it turn lumpy. And as you can see in there, there is absolutely no lumpiness going on whatsoever. Now, I don't know, obviously I don't know because I don't know Jason very well at all. It could be that some colours are a different formula formulation than others. We don't know that. I don't, very much doubt it, but we don't know that. So what I'm going to do with each colour I paint now, I'm going to, with the little bit that's left at the end, I'm going to test it with um, leveling thinners and I'll let you know if I get any problems. So what I'm going to do now off camera is paint this green bit. Well, I might even do it on camera. Um, I'm going to give the airbrush a quick clean out and then uh, do this cockpit green on here otherwise I'll forget because I'm a forgetful Hector so I'll give that a bit of a shake in fact 
something let's just put it in it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit lighter does it i mean i, I always think ref cockpit green is a little bit too dark anyway i think it should be lighter let's we'll see if it sprays there we go you can see it coming out see it pushing its way out on the side there must be food, very foolish doing this next to the model because it could have sprayed all over the model but um yeah that that part of it is a pain but i don't think it's going to affect you when you buy your outdoor paints so what I'm going to do is just stick a drop of this. In fact, I'm going to get some on a brush. No, I won't. I'll pour it in. Just the tiniest drop. There we go. I can't believe every time I make a video, there is somebody here who mows their lawn. And I can't believe that after the amount of rain we've had the last two days, they're actually mowing their lawn. It must be impossible. So I'll do a little check first check how it flows lovely and then we're going to come over and we're going to spray our canopy just to get that green framing effect i bet this masking looks awful it's some um, very very difficult to, to mask there we go could do with improving that seam down there in the bottom but I really can't be bothered. This is a lovely little kit and I think the clear parts in a way they let it down. There we go right so that's that done. So that can go back in there. No I can't be bothered. So I'll get this all cleaned up and then I'll come back after a while we'll mask this up. We'll see how good it is at adhering to the model um, and we'll see how it looks, how it, you know, how the masking tape holds up. We'll mask it off and get the other half spray black. Okay, so this is two, maybe three days later now, so sort of 48, 72 hours this was put on. Um, one thing I've noticed, I doubt very much you're going to see it on camera because of the difference between the backgrounds and everything, but it's certainly a little greyer than it was when I put it down. Um, it's, it's kind of... I've seen this before with, with paints when they're hot. They kind of sort of burn into the primer, which is a good thing because it, it means it's really, really tough. So for RC models and stuff, this stuff is going to be amazing. Um, but it's kind of darkened up. It's got this, I can just see this grey coming through, um, which is not an issue. If I wanted an absolutely brilliant white, I'd just give it a, I'd use white primer. But, um, but it's absolutely fine, but it's just something to be aware of particularly for using like yellows and stuff. And if you've seen my Sea King build, I think it was part 12 or 13, I think it was part 12 when I sprayed my rotors, you'll see on there that it attacked the plastic. And yes, there is an issue with the, with the plastic in that, in that kit. It's, um, it's very susceptible to, to paint. Um, even Tamiya LP, sort of, you can see it, it eats into it. Um, and, and this um, Outlaw Paints did the same. So I went over and did a test and, and it proved to be the, the plastic, not the paint. So it's something to bear in mind. The, the trouble is, you see, you can have a great paint that goes on and will absolutely cover and stay white and everything. But if it doesn't actually bite, it's just going to scrape off. I'm talking about the likes of Viejo in the bottles, not the... Not a, um, not, um, AK, not AK real colour, AK in the bottles, VA ho, you know, the polyurethane primer, you can literally roll it off under your, th thing, under your thumb. Um, so yeah, this th it's not like that. It's very, very tough and very scratch resistant. And you can see there, I'm rubbing my fingernail on it. Nothing. It's not marking it at all. So um, it's a very, very tough paint. But just remember, it is quite hot. So lay it down, build it up. And, uh, and let it let it dry between coats, which is probably what I should have done there. I don't want to give it another coat because I want to get out and mask it and do the black. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a piece of masking tape from my holder. That should be long enough. I can hear Jess outside barking. And I'm going to mask the wrong side. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down straight along here just to kind of get a straight line just to kind of get a straight line down the middle. Okay, so that should do it. You can probably hear Jess barking in the background. I'll have to go and get her in because the 
poor old neighbours shouldn't have to put up with that, should they? Okay, so that's I bloody marked it on the I masked it on the right side. I wanted to mask it on the wrong side. I want to mask it on the wrong side so I can make a straight line and then butt the other masking tape up to it. So I'm going to go straight across there and then up like that. Yep, and that's good. So we've got a dead straight line there now. So I can leave that there as a guide and then I can mask up to it. Okay, so this video isn't about masking, this video is about painting. So I'll get this done off camera and then I'll come back when I'm ready to do the black. Okay, so I've got to keep the bottle in this stand here because the, the bottom is broken. Got the cap out, it went everywhere, you can see all over my finger there. Um, so <laughs> here we go. So let's just do a quick trial with this again, just test the flow. I'm on about 18 psi, straight out of the bottle, straight into the airbrush. Just notice I've got a bit of tape on there. I've masked the wing and the tail plane where they're supposed to be white. And that can stay on there for the camouflage as well, because I've trimmed around the edge and I've done the leading edge here. So that's all ready for camouflage. I want to make sure this tape is well away from that tail plate. Okay, so now we can just check our flow and start a bit of painting. As I said, do a little bit on here and then I'll do some more in the booth. I'm just putting this down lightly. Don't want to go flooding it. Okay, it looks very nice. And this is called RAF. RAF Knight, RAF Black, I think it should be Knight. So there are two different blacks, be careful of that. There was a, a very early war, one which was a very matte, and it came off very easily apparently. And then later in the war on the Lancasters they changed it. It was a bit more glossy, a bit more bluey, um, but it was a lot tougher apparently. So um, if you are a rivet counter, and there you go. That's covering very nice, and it's left a... Uh, a nice sort of semi-matte sheen and if it's anything like the white I should imagine it'll be tough as old boots so that's good so I'm going to go on and get the rest done and then I'll come back and show you how it looks okay so there's the RAF black with the broken bottle um, so as always something I always do unmask as soon as you can because if you let the paint your eye that's when you run the risk of peeling on the edge so we're going to see how this has done Get that off of there because I want to leave a little bit of creeping going on here. I don't know why. Probably because the tape was right on the edge there. But, uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. That's not the paint's fault. I think it's because of the come off tape. I think it's because of where it is because it's absolutely fine along here look. but here we've got some creeping so I'll have to uh, just blow that in or I'll probably just dry brush it when I weather it but um yeah it's not too bad it's uh it's black um it's a lovely finish but something that did surprise me that little bit used the whole you saw how much paint I put in there it used all of it so that was quite surprised. I was expecting to put some back in the bottle because it generally covers so well. So it does seem to be a variation in the in the paints. Like the yellow probably covers as well as the black, and that's something that you won't hear about any other paint manufacturer. I can tell you. So um, so yeah, I'll have to do something about that because I don't like the look of it. You can see it's got a, a bit of a tatty edge. That's nothing to do with the paint. That's all to do with me. Um, we can also take this sponge out of here. And we can also remove that tape from there. It should be underneath there, it should be silver. Just push the tape back down in numbskull. So we'll lift that out of there, there we go. And then we can get a pair of pointy tweezers. We can take the foam out of the front. 
we can see it's looking good. We'll get the foam out of those wheel wells as well. May as well. Wheel wells as well, may as well. <laughs> um, so there we go. So happy with that. It needs a bit of a touch up. Um, obviously where the edge of the foam is and stuff like that, but that's that's just par for the course. That would be the same with any paint, any model, any size, any scale. Uh, so yeah, happy with that. So um, we'll get this other side masked up now after, I'll, I'll leave it 24 hours, give the paint a fair chance. So I don't want to put the tape on there now, leave it on there for a couple of days and then say, oh look, it's ripped it off because that's just not a fair trial. But I've got to mask this, the whole underside off along here, along there, all that wing, and then we can start on the camouflage. So um, all in all, very nice. Um, I was expecting to go, oh, I haven't sprayed those bits, have I, you idiot? Got these bits here, got the propeller and that gear door to do. And I've got hardly any paint left. Oh yeah, I've got enough. I'll get those done and then we'll come back and see how they look. All right, so I've got those bits done. The propeller's come out really nice. If you remember, we had those horrible seams around the back end there, but it's come out really nice. And uh, yeah, the black paint is very nice indeed. But once again, I used a lot more than I thought I would. So uh, we've got a little pitot tube done there. And then we've got our undercarriage doors there ready to go on. I have got the white ones, haven't I? Yeah. Um, so, uh, all in all, very nice. So, um, come back in a day or so and we'll do the, we'll start on the camouflage. As I say, I'm going to give this a good chance to dry. I don't want to give it an unfair trial. And uh, that'll be it then for the masking. So we can just go on and do the camouflage. If we do it freehand, um, see, how we can, see how we get on freehand. I think it'll look okay. Right, see you for the camouflage. Right then guys, here we are now, a couple of days later, and the bottom is all taped up now. And we're all masked and ready to start putting some, under, uh, some undercarriage, some camouflage on. I've removed the canopy so that I could paint this area in here green. I was going to leave it on there and paint it green, but then I thought, well, I, you know, I'm going to have to take it off and the paint's going to be sticky and it's going to make a mess. So I've got the canopy stuck to a piece of blue tack over here. So that's good to go. Um, so the um, paints that I was sent, as you know, as I've said about a million times, they sent me the medium green, which is, I think it's 34097. It's like the, the, the lighter green of the SEA camouflage for like A10s and stuff and uh, B52s. Um, so it's a lovely color green, but it's the wrong color for RAF green. So I've just added a drop of the RAF black, the RAF black. I've just added about three brushfuls into there. And this is probably about, third full up to there sort of thing so just darkened it up a touch just to get the color up so I know there's some other guys out there have got these and doing the same tests um that's what I've done for mine and it's kind of kind of matches the REF dark green as you can see there so uh that's the AK real colors one it's not about the color it's about the paint if the model turns out really really nice um before I put the decals on I may well go over it with um, the proper the proper green because it'd be a nice little display piece I think it, has, it is turning into a lovely little model actually um, semi second in my thing but uh, there we go so I'm going to do the green first so what we'll do is we'll get the uh, we'll get the lid off in our usual way I shouldn't have put it back on should I um, so we'll probably get squirted now there we go we didn't get squirted so that's cool Put that down there, out of the way, and I'm just going to grab the airbrush. It's all set up, ready to go. It's all nice and clean. So every time I do a video, my mum sends me a text. Right. Well, not every time, but a lot of times. So we've got the green here. So we'll do a little bit. We'll see how it sprays. Um, I'm going to clean the top of the bottle off here. Just put this lid back on loosely. It gets knocked over and we'll do a little bit of the green so um i've got it mounted here on a paintbrush obviously so i don't have to touch it so looking at the plan here i'm going to turn this around i've got this this is on the back of the box so this tail plane do a little test yep this tail plane is sort of half green so we go uh, roughly again it's roughly 18 roughly 18 psi what I really should do is just paint the whole thing green I suppose um, and then this tail plane over here I 
I may mask this up with some sausages, some blue tax or white tax sausages, I don't know, we shall see. Um, and then the fuselage, we've got sort of coming up the fuselage there. Okay, and then on this wing, going from sort of here across. There, like that, and then, and then I'll just paint all that now. Won't... There we go, so that's about right. It's funny, I was um, chatting to someone the other day, and they were telling me they saw somebody writing, or well, they, they actually made a video, and they actually said, Don't worry about the camouflage patterns because they were random, they just painted them any old how. Right, okay. Okay, I wish people wouldn't say things online like that because they it just misleads people. It's like people say that the P61, the B25, the A20 and the A26 all had the same wheels and tyres. They didn't. So, there we go. What happens is somebody says something online and everybody else just believes it. I can ca categorically tell you the A26 Sorry, the A20 has 44 inch tyres and the B25 has 47 inch tyres. As for the 26 and the 61, I don't know. I've got 61 and I've got resin wheels and it's right at the bottom of my stash. I'm not going to get it out, but I will get it out at some point and have a look just to see. So here we're going up over. As you can see, it's, it's painting lovely. It's um, really, really nice. It doesn't seem to be as, as thick as the yellow, if you know what I mean. So I'll blast across the top of the cockpit there to get those side walls coloured in green rather than the grey, the grey plastic. Um, and then on this wing over here we're going like that, like that, like that. Oh, I've done that wrong, haven't I? Like that, like that, and over there. Yeah, so we've got to push that tape in there. So that's going like halfway across the guns, and then we're coming back, and then we're going over there. Okay. Yeah, I think I will use some sausages on this because I don't think I don't think it's going to work out very well if I do it freehand, especially in seventy-second scale. It would almost be a hard edge in 70 seconds now. Right, I'm going to go to the booth and finish this off, guys, because I'm starting to smell it. I don't want to stink the room out. But, um, you get the idea. You can see how it's not covering in one coat, so we can go over the second coat. It's using hardly any paint. Unlike the black, that was really weird with that black. So I'm going to go in circles so I don't get any stripes or anything. And then bring the airbrush a bit further away. That should get rid of any pattern we've got in it. So you go in circles like so. And you don't get any lines in the paint. And here we're going down. And down there. By the look of things, push that tape down. Clear on here at all.
Okay, so there we go. I really am gonna call it a day there and I'll see you in a minute. There we go, so that's our green done. Happy with that. Covers really, really nicely. I've used probably two millilitres, if that. So uh, yeah, it's covered really, really nicely. It goes down really well. It also leaves it, all this outlaw paint, it leaves a lovely finish. It's, a, it's not dead flat, but it's, it is very flat. It's very realistic, actually. It's got a very slight sheen to it. So um, yeah, if you're doing something like a big bomber, I think this would look great on a 48 scale Lancaster, something like that, it would look great. But uh, I think the colour's not bad either after my little mix. But uh, as I say, this isn't about the colour, this is about the paint. It's not about the techniques, it's about how it sprays, how it covers, how quick it dries, um, and how it looks basically when it's on. So that's that's basically what this uh, these videos are all about. So I'm going to give this a little while to dry, and then I think I'll put some sausages on it, and then we'll get it painted. Right, so we've got it all um, masked up now with the, uh, with the, uh, the white tack. Um, I'm trying to achieve a sort of rough edge on it. I don't know how it's going to come out. As I say, 72nd isn't really my thing. Um, I would say probably the best way to do this would be with cut masks. Um, as I say, if it comes out really nice, I may paint it again. We shall see. But um, as it's, this is just a, a mule for testing this paint. So we've got the, the RAF Dark Earth now. And we're just going to paint this on. And what I'm doing, I'm staying 90 degrees to the blue tack or the white tack. You don't want to be blowing into it. You want to stay 90 degrees. It keeps it soft keeps the edge soft but then as I say this isn't about technique this is about the paint and as you can see it's covering really nicely and I tend to do this when I do white tap I tend to do one lot just stay in one area without moving because if I come back now and do it at that angle I'll get like a shadow so what I'll do is I'll do here as I say staying in one area so we don't get shadows and stuff okay so that's that part of the wing done now we need to come along with the leading edge to make sure we get a nice tight line down there and here 90 degrees to the blue tack I turn the model so we're staying 90 degrees to the blue tack Just like so, there we go. As you can see, it does cover very, very well. And it smells different as well. I wonder if there, these paints with different blends, different colours, have different dinners in them or something. I don't know, it's weird. I, I, I swear that smells different than the, the other colours. But, um, there we go. So I'm going to get this finished off now in the booth because it's smelly. And uh, we'll see how it looks when it's all done. And there we go, that's the brown all done. I've also done the antenna, which is there, and the rudder as well. Just It's just this tiny bit here that needs to be done because the rest of it has got a decal on it. So I've just left that in the in the grey and then that will help the, um, the decal go down nicely because we have got a white band up through the middle of it. So if I did the camouflage, it might show through, we shall see. But um, I, what I can say, this paint is certainly very hot. You can see here once again like we had with the Sea King's rotor blade you can see here the it's kind of it's attacking where it was underneath it so bear that in mind um, when, you, when you're using it and I also found that when I was spraying this on I should have stopped and showed you on the camera I also found that where there was green underneath the green was actually coming through much like if you do pre-shading you can watch the pre-shading come through that was very much what was happening so, um, yeah, but you can see the, uh, the demarcation there between the, the green and the brown. That's all good. I may actually... Oh, I forgot to do that bit there. Look, what a bloody idiot. I forgot to do that. I'm going to have to clean the airbrush and everything. I have to do a, get a bit more paint out and do that. So I'll do that. I'm going to get it unmasked and then we'll see how it looks. And I'll give you some final thoughts. Okay, so there we are. She's done. Um, I've messed up in a couple of areas here. This is... Typical of me doing this. I should have sprayed the whole thing green and then did the, the camouflage. But, um, you can see here we've got some grey areas coming through. This is where the, the grey is underneath. Where I haven't I haven't gone back far enough with the um, with the white tack. So uh, you can see it makes a bit of a mess. I've also got a piece of masking tape on there I've left in place to get that. Um, where's my other tweezers gone? 
I put them away. That's where they're gone. Um, yeah, this was so I could get some paint down in that little corner down in there. Oh, come on, come off. There we go. Right, so I think what I'll do, I'm going to... I'm going to paint the model again, um, so I've got the correct green and I can get a nice... I don't like this edging, it's too soft for 70 seconds scale. I'm going to mask it properly with tape. Um, so there we go. So I'll leave the masking on the bottom obviously because I'm going to paint it again with the correct colour. I'm also not sure this brown, it, it doesn't... It doesn't look kind of earthy enough to me. I don't, I don't know what you think, you, you, you'll make your own mind up when you get some. But um. On the subject of it being hot, it certainly is hot. As I said, you can see here, it's got that grainy finish where it's actually attacking, which is brilliant um, because it means it's sticking really, really well to the surface. Now this was primed with Mr. Surfacer. Now I know I had the problem on the Seeking, the Seeking rotor, and that turned out it was the plastic because everything I'd used was, was, was having the same effect. And this being Airfix, I thought I'm gonna give it a shot on something else. So this is the inside of the turret, of the Tacum turret for the Sharon horse I've recently reviewed. And you can see here, what I've done here is sprayed it on and slowly built it up. And there's a couple of areas where you can see it's a little bit grainy where it's attacked. This here, I flooded it on heavy and you can see it has attacked the plastic. And this here is sort of half and half. So um, it is very hot paint. It does actually attack the plastic. Which, as I say, is great um, if you're looking for durability, but if you're after fine surface detail, um, you know, it, it's not great. I actually, I like the paint. Um, obviously the green I've had to mix up, and as I say, I'm not 100% sure about that brown. Um, maybe it doesn't look right because the green isn't right, I don't know. It's certainly in the ballpark, but um, I just still think it looks... Maybe it's because it's got a bit of a sheen to it. As you can see, it has dried with a slight sheen. Um, the green, as you can see in here, look at the fuselage, you can see the, the brown certainly has more of a shine than the green. So that's uh, something else that says maybe they're different. I don't know. But um, anyway, that's that done. So my opinion, um, it's very nice paint. It covers very well. For some reason, the black doesn't cover as well as the other colours did. Um, I probably use twice as much black to do this as I have to do all the green and brown. So, um, yeah, it's very, very strange. Um, the, it, it sprays beautifully. It comes out of the airbrush beautifully. For me, I would like to thin it a bit. Um, and as I say, I did do a test. I did a test. Was it in this video? I can't remember. This, is, this has been going on for ages. Um, I did a test thin, thinning it with uh, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner. And it worked absolutely fine. Somebody else said it, it, it didn't work for them. But, um, for me, it's worked absolutely fine. Um, again, it could be this thing. Maybe different colours have different makeups. But I tried it with the white and it, it thinned it beautifully. So, yeah, overall, um, Outlaw Paints, yes, recommended. Um, but I wouldn't sort of scrap my, my, whole, my whole range of Tamiya LPs or XFs or, or MRPs to go and buy them. Um, I don't think they're, you know, there's, there's certainly the coverage is better than MRP. Um, MRP is much thinner, you use a lot more paint. Um, as far as stiction to the plastic goes, I think they're both going to be about the same. Tamiya LP is easily available in this country, it's easily, easily available worldwide. And it goes down lovely. Their X, their LP13, I think it is, um, the Curie Arsenal uh, Grey for the um, for Yamato, it has such a beautiful finish. It's unbelievably nice. It's lovely, um, and that that will be my go-to paint for for Yamato. Um, and again, they the LP stick beautifully to the plastic. They're designed to go straight on plastic, as I believe these are. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> they're certainly not as hot as this, although they are hot, they do stick very, very well. I mean, this is not, this is nowhere in the ballpark of like your AK bottle paints and your Viejos and stuff. They are just not even in the same ballpark. They're, they're, they're one out of ten, this is ten out of ten sort of thing, you know, uh, if you compare the two. They, they don't spray easily, you get a load of tip dry. Um, 
they you have to add um, stuff to them to make them spray nicely and it's just why bother the downside with um, the Tamiya colours is they don't have a huge range and that they never have um, it's always like generics German grey or such and such cockpit green it's you know they just have one cockpit green whereas MRP probably have about five or six different ones so um yeah so yeah be interesting to see what the range holds for us um I don't know what availability is going to be like in this country. I know that um, James is going to be the sole UK distributor for Outlaw Paints. So however his stocks are going to hold up or whatever, I don't know. He'll probably sell out of certain colours straight away and then have to wait another sort of few weeks to get some more in. Because as you can imagine, the shipping from Australia is going to cost a fortune. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to paint this again because it is a lovely little model and all the seams are gone. And it's it's been a good little beginner's video build this. And it'd be nice to have it finished for some photographs. So uh, that's my um, my outlook on Outlaw Paints, if you like. Um, as I say, I, they are very nice. If they want to send me some more to try out, I'll do it. But I'm not going to go and rush out and replace my LPs or anything with, with, with Outlaw Paints. Um, their primer, on the other hand, their black primer is wonderful stuff and I will probably be buying some more of that um, so we shall see and the yellow this um, this yellow this RAF trainer yellow is fantastic it covers I mean I've done this this propeller you can see I've sprayed the center with a hobby boss um, a Mr. Hobby paint um, and I've done the the tips with the yellow and that's been sprayed on over black so you can see how well that's covered and anything else you need about 40 coats so the yellow is definitely worth having um, definitely um, so there we go that's my that's my opinion so thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this little video and uh, any questions or anything pop them down below as I say I'll, I'll put a link to sprue box where these paints will be available from in the UK in the US it's high altitude Brett's company high altitude hobbies you'll get them from there um, I'm not sure about the rest of the world I'm not sure obviously in Australia you're going to get them direct probably New Zealand is where you get them direct um, the rest of the world I don't know I don't know who's going to be the big European distributor of them we uh, we shall have to wait and see but um yeah very nice paint go and get some that's all I can say thanks for watching bye for now